Hi guys, today I'm going to talk about books that I've DNF'd. I think I was planning to do a video at the end of 2018 where I talked about all of my DNFs of 2018. I'm just gonna do it now because if I start talking about both 2018 and 2019 so far, it's gonna be a lot of books. So let's just talk about all the books that I DNF'd last year and never got around to discussing with you guys. I have 10 books to talk about, so that's a good even number, 10 DNFs of 2018. And if you can hear road construction, that's just gonna be happening. It's a doozy. There's a couple books on here that I started reading during readathons. So if you watched my readathon vlogs during those weeks, um, you will have gotten a little bit of a taste for what I thought about these books. So let's talk about those first because um, they're the only ones I've mentioned on my channel so far. We have The Luckiest Girl Alive by Jessica Knoll. This is a mystery thriller about this woman with a dark past. And I read this during the Buzzword readathon last year and I really hated it. I DNF'd it about a third of the way through. It is a book where you're inside the head of a woman who hates all other women and thinks that every other female on the planet is terrible. She has really disordered thoughts about eating and her body and it's just not fun to experience a narrative that's so focused on like diet culture and terrible negative misogynistic thoughts. I really felt like no tension about the mystery thriller aspect of this book. It was just like not fun to read. I really hated it. Another book that I read during a readathon was I Know What You Did Last Summer by Lois Duncan. I believe I was reading this during Booktubeathon last year. This was a book I wanted to read because of my Project Decades challenge that I was doing last year and it is like a another like mystery thriller about these teenagers who are being haunted by someone who knows what they did last summer. It's a movie too. The movie's probably more famous. You probably have seen it. I actually haven't seen the movie so it was really familiar to me as a story but I had never actually read it or seen the movie and I really just like this book was just stupid. It was like so obvious like what they did last summer so many aspects of like who's the bad guy were just like pretty clear to me it takes place in the past i think this was written in like the 60s or something so it just felt so antiquated and not relatable in any way shape or form their lives that they were living were so not interesting to read about I truly didn't care about that book at all. It's really short. I got like 60% of the way through it, so like over halfway I could have finished it and I just like could not bring myself to do it. I ended up picking a different book to fulfill the challenge that I had been reading that one for during Booktubeathon. I just didn't read it at all. Um, my sister had read that book and I just asked her to tell me how it ended, which was not interesting. I was glad I didn't read it. And then the last book that has made an appearance before on this channel is Not the Girls You're Looking For by Amina May Safi. I think I was maybe reading this for like contemporary thought or something. And I didn't get super far into this one. I think I made it, oh, 34%, so like a third of the way. But it didn't feel like I even made it a third of the way because I retained so little from this book. I don't know what it is about it, but I just like couldn't get into it at all. I remember multiple scenes from that book where the main character was like kind of flirting with a guy and I literally wasn't sure if it, it was like the same male love interest throughout the whole thing or if she had like two different guys that she was kind of interested in. It was just all a big blend and like I I truly like didn't really know what was going on half the time in that book. I couldn't figure out what the main plot was going to be or like what the conflict was or what the point of the book was. By the time I got a third of the way through it, it just like didn't grab my interest at all. I really could not make my way through that book. I honestly don't even know what to tell you it's about as like a summary. It's a young adult contemporary. I don't even know what happens in that book. Birds. 
The next book I'm going to talk about is Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury, and I'm moving on to this one because I did not read this for a readathon, but I think I did mention it in a readathon vlog last year. I mentioned that I had been reading it and was going to finish it. That did not happen. This book I, I was definitely reading for Project Decades. It's a classic dystopian novel in a world in which books are burned. Nobody is allowed to read them. Our main character is like a fireman and he burns books for a living. I just felt like this entire concept and execution was so heavy-handed. It's very hard for me to sit and read this book and just like imagine this happening. Like there were aspects of it that were good dystopian qualities, but I would say for the most part this felt just over the top and ridiculous. I just like was really bored by it. And this is a pretty short book and I just I could not force myself to read it. I couldn't do it. I don't know why. I made it 42% of the way through Fahrenheit 451. I do feel like at some point in my life I am going to read this book again. It's such a famous like classic novel and again it's really short like it should not be hard for me to read it at some point but I have no desire to do that until it like becomes a pressing reason for me to read this book. So you know maybe someday I'll have a reason to read it and I'll actually restart it and give it a go again but like I just was really uninterested and bored by this book and it just it did not impress me it didn't make me think at all next up why don't we talk about The Winner's Curse by Marie Rutkowski I had strong feelings about this book this is a very popular fantasy novel it's kind of low fantasy it takes place in another world the main character is kind of caught up in some political drama and uh, political fighting going on she purchases a slave and this this slave is like a secret agent for the the resistance or whatever and the two of them i think start ha uh, maybe having a romance i don't even know if i got that far but like that's like the main plot is like these two characters falling in love and the political stuff going on. I <laughs> hated this. Oh my god, I hated this book so much. I just personally could not allow myself to get into the idea of a romance between a slave and their master. Literally, I had no idea that was what this book was about. This book has been recommended to me so many times by so many people and nobody told me it was a romance between somebody and their slave. Like they own this human being. That seems like pertinent information to me, but I guess people just like don't care about this as much as I do. I don't understand. I really don't understand. I was honestly flabbergasted reading that book and like learning like what really was going on and like what it was about and how I had literally seen so many people say they love it, but nobody has, I, I've never seen anybody talk about this like problematic premise. In general, I just was not a fan of the world building. It was very confusing. I didn't feel comfortable reading it. I was very bored. Um, you all know that fantasy is like difficult for me to get into. There's like a whole fantasy world being developed and I like truly didn't care about it. It takes a lot for me to like really really get into fantasy so having this whole huge aspect of it that I didn't like, like I definitely was not going to get into the fantasy elements of this book like for sure so it, nothing about it worked for me. I DNF'd it at 55% so I made it just over the halfway point and I truly could not continue. The main character, I've been told so many times that she was just like so intelligent, uses her wit to get what she wants, it's so good at strategy, and I didn't really see any of that. She didn't impress me. It really wasn't that great. I don't know. Not a fan. Okay, next I'm going to talk about Conquistadora by Esmeralda Santiago. This is a book that I wish I didn't DNF, but I did. I started this book a really long time ago. I tried to read it and I just like let it drift off into the background. I never really came back to it, but I just left it on my like currently reading shelf on Goodreads. I kept thinking, you know, maybe I'll come back to that book. One day I saw that Roxanne from the Novel Sanctuary was reading that book and I was like, oh, uh, we should buddy read it because I thought maybe like if I had her to help me, I could restart the book and like get into it again because I really wanted to read this book. She read the book. I got about to the same spot that I did before. I just like could not 
finish this book. It was very frustrating. <laughs> so eventually I was like, Karen, you DNF this book. Like you might not want to decide that you DNF'd it, but like you did it for yourself. Like it already happened. This book has been DNF'd. So I finally like put it on my DNF shelf and like, I'm not gonna pretend I'm still reading that book cause I'm not. This is a really interesting book. It's a historical fiction about this woman in Spain and she ends up marrying this guy and they go to manage a sugar plantation that is in his family. Our main character is fascinating. She's really morally gray. She's bisexual, although that word obviously doesn't really exist in this time period. I just found so many aspects of this book to be really interesting. The author of this book is Puerto Rican and it is really about like the white people who colonized Puerto Rico and it's, you know, the main character is like this white person who through both indirect and direct decisions and actions on her part, she definitely contributed to a lot of the marginalization and, you know, like horrible things that happened to native Puerto Ricans. And it's just really interesting to be in that person's head and see so many different sides of her, but also recognizing that she and her husband and her families are people from history that just have really contributed to a lot of terrible things and it's really interesting to see the the actual like people from Puerto Rico like working on this sugarcane plantation. It all was just like really wonderfully written, wonderfully researched. There were so many aspects of it that I just like I loved. I would say the first like third of this book was like a five star read for me and then the, later on in the book things got a little bit iffy. I think what really lost me about this one is that it is so long. We follow these characters for such a long time and their lives really like do change so drastically throughout the novel. So we get like this section of her life that's so different from the next section and so different from the next section. And I eventually hit a point where I, I kind of had lost track of what I really loved in the beginning of this book and I didn't know where things were heading. I didn't love the point we were at and I just like, I couldn't like keep reading. It just, I don't know. I really, really had to put in the effort to like bring myself to that point. I DNF'd it at, I think 58%. So there was still quite a bit to go. And I, I don't know. I still am just like really disappointed in myself that I couldn't finish reading that book, but I don't know what to say. It was a DNF, but it's a book that I would recommend to people and a book that I don't regret reading and a book that I really enjoyed while I was reading it. So it's just, an undertaking and it's a lot. If you think you have a stronger constitution than me as a reader, then I would recommend you try reading this book. Next, let's talk about another historical fiction novel. We're gonna talk about Alex and Eliza by Melissa de la Cruz. This is a book I picked up because I thought it would be really like fluffy, fun, light-hearted reading. It honestly wasn't that. Like I thought because Melissa de la Cruz is writing this, she writes a lot of like YA that's just easily consumable. I knew going into it that I wasn't going to be that interested in the content. This is a book about Eliza and Alexander Hamilton and their like relationship. Obviously like she was like inspired to write this because of the musical Hamilton. I was inspired to read it because of the musical Hamilton. But much like the biography of Alexander Hamilton by Ron Chernow, I DNF that book because Turns out I'm not interested in American history. <laughs> and I DNF this book because it was really boring and it had so much American history. Obviously, <laughs> that's what I was getting into. Like, I should have known that a book about Alexander Hamilton was gonna be about American history. Like, hello. <laughs> I just thought it would be more consumable than it was and it was like very boring and I did not care about it. I hit the 21% mark on that one, so I really didn't make it far, but like, I really thought I was gonna be able to power through that one, and I just like, could not. Next we're gonna talk about There's Someone Inside Your House by Stephanie Perkins. This is a departure from Stephanie Perkins, who usually writes really adorable YA contemporary romances. She wrote like a slasher novel about a killer in a town and the high schoolers who are dealing with this killer. This book really was a blend of the contemporary like YA genre that Stephanie Perkins is usually writing and then the obviously like slasher mystery scary movie type feel that she decided to write about for this novel. And I found that the 
the combination of these two things made the book very ineffective. The contemporary elements were like not super fun for me to read about because I didn't want to get too invested in them because I was like, these people could die any second. And then the scary scenes where somebody was getting murdered, I just thought were like not scary at all because the stakes didn't feel high at all. There was no tension. I didn't think it was scary. I really just like didn't get anything out of this book. This one I DNF'd at 41% of the way through. And again, my sister read this book, so I just told her to tell me what happened. And it was not that impressive to me. Don't regret DNFing that one either. I do regret trying to read it at all. Next, let's talk about One Dark Throne by Kendara Blake. I read the first book in this series a while back. It's uh, Three Dark Crowns, I think, and it's this fantasy series about these triplets, and one of them is going to become the queen of the land, but they have to fight each other. The last one surviving will be crowned. They've been raised separately, um, but soon they will be locked in a battle. I did not love the first book in this series. I read the whole thing and I found it really disappointing. I thought it was boring, like no action happened at all. I thought that it was way too focused on like a love triangle and I'm so over reading forced love triangle drama. But there was kind of a twist at the end and that made me really want to pick up the second book. I thought that the things that were revealed at the end of the first book, I really thought that they were going to like make the second book so much better. So I went into the second book like kind of excited. I genuinely thought that the things I didn't like about the first one would be fixed in the second one. This ended up not being the case. It continued to be overly dense, so little action, so boring. The characters made the most foolish mistakes. Right off the bat, I was just like, oh my goodness, can you not? How do you not realize the mistakes you're making? It was not gonna happen. It made me honestly like regret even reading the first book. I definitely realized that I was not going to continue on with this series. I just needed to bail before I got too deep in it. So I only made it like 13% of the way through that book. Not very far, but I wanted to mark it as DNF first of all, just to be like, I'm actively not going to finish this entire series. Not just like, oh, I read the first book and maybe I'll read the other one someday. It's like, no, I read the first book. I tried to read the second book. I wanted to finish this series. It is not happening. I went in with such high hopes. Like, I truly thought things were going to change and then they didn't. And then the last book I'm going to talk about today is the last book that I DNF'd in 2018 and it is What's Left of Me by Kat Zhang. This is a dystopian novel. It's the first in a series. The premise of this series is that everyone in the world is born with like two personalities inside them. And when they're little kids, it's okay. These two personalities go back and forth, but eventually one of them becomes the dominant personality and the other one just disappears and dies. The protagonist that we are following is actually the secondary like personality inside her body, but she never died. So she and her sister live in the same body and everyone thinks that her sister is like the dominant personality that survived and they don't think there is a second personality inside her body. So our protagonist just has to live a quiet life like quietly existing inside the mind of her sister because people who don't lose their second personality are not allowed in society. It's like illegal for this to happen and if anyone found out that she still had her second personality then like she would be taken away to a research facility and like tested on and like they would murder her se like second personality. I don't know. A classic YA dystopian premise that's like this doesn't make sense, but like, okay, let's, let's enjoy this book. But I just really didn't like it, and I DNF'd this book at 83%. I made it so far into this book, and I eventually was like, I don't even care how this ends. I truly did not care how it ended. 
So I just decided to stop reading it. I think I had like an hour and something to listen to, but I listen on double speed. So it would have been less than an hour of my time just to finish the book and like be done with it. I couldn't even do it. I just like completely like lost all the will I had in me to finish that book. And so I just DNF'd it. And I still don't know how it ends. I don't know what happens in the other books. And like still to this day, I have no inkling of a desire to even like look up what happened at the end of the book. I truly don't care. The world building as it went on, it just like <laughs> really grated at me because it made so little sense. And I just felt like 100% ambivalent about every single character the plot and like what was going on it wasn't even that i like actively hated it i just thought it was like uninteresting and i just truly had like no part of me that cared about it i almost wish it had been like a terrible book that i could have like read and hated and at least like made fun of it and enjoyed my time like making fun of it but it it honestly wasn't even that bad like it was it was an okay book like it it wasn't terrible i've read way worse books than that but it just everything about it was just so mediocre i that's honestly all i can say about that book so yeah my camera is absolutely dying right now the road construction outside is going strong and i am starving so i'm gonna end this video i hope you enjoyed this let me know what you thought if you have read any of these books or if you think i should give any of them a second try don't think it's gonna happen with most of them but i'm really curious if you enjoyed them or you thought they were worth reading thank you very much for watching those were all the books that i dnf'd in 2018 and i will see you guys tomorrow <laughs>